In this example, John needs $12,000 for a down payment on a car in three years. He deposits $250 a month into an account, paying 5% per year, compounded monthly. The question is, will he have enough? Will he have enough at the, at the end of this uh, three-year period? All right, so let's identify what we need. We, we, we want a future value of $12,000, right? Now we want to calculate the actual future value of this um, $250 per month at 5% interest compounded monthly, right? So what we need to do is convert the or um, calculate the future value of that. So um, the monthly payment, this is the R value, capital R is $250. Um, the nominal interest rate is 0 0.05 per year, all right? So and then um, the number of conversion periods is 12, 12 per year. And t is equal to three years. So remember, t is always in years. All right. Now we want to just use our formula. So we're going to take the 250 rent payments. We're going to take that. And we're going to uh, just plug the numbers into the formula. So 1 plus i, which is r over m, so 0 0.05 over 12, to the number of periods. Now we have uh, 12 uh, monthly payments over three years, so that's 36. So I'm just going to go ahead and multiply those. So minus 1 all over the interest rate per conversion period, which is um, 0 0.05 over 12. Okay. And then put it into your calculator. All right. So $9,688.33. All right. Well, he wanted $12,000. So he's not there. So the answer here is no. <laughs> no. No, he will not have enough. He will not have enough. All right. Now, this example four is related. All right, because now, um, you know, we're, uh, we're, so suppose John came to you and said, well, how much should I set aside? I'm not, I'm looking, I'm looking at this and I'm not going to have enough to get 12,000. So how much should he set aside? All right, let's take a, see if we can figure that out. Now we can actually use the same formula that we have. So, but now we want the future value to be 12,000, right? We want this future value to be 12,000. That's what we want. Um, we know we have uh, an account that pays uh, 5% uh, per year uh, on a monthly basement basis, <laughs> on a monthly basis, and, um, and we're gonna, we're, we need it in three years. So our T is equal to three years. Well, notice we can just, well, S is 12,000. So we want the final thing to be well, worth 12,000, the final future value to be 12,000. And I know that if I take the R, the monthly payment, times all this stuff that I already wrote, wrote up here, I'm just going to rewrite what I, what I wrote. I'm just plugging numbers into the formula, right? Only this time, <laughs> the thing we don't know is on the right-hand side of the equal sign. So let me just copy, oops, copy this down, 0 0.05 over 12 to the 36th power minus 1 all over... 0 0.05 over 12. Okay. Now, now we can't calculate that because we don't know what R is, right? But we can solve for R. And the key thing to, to recognize here is that I'm just going to copy this down. Um, I can, I'm going to just take R and then this whole thing is just a constant. This whole thing in parentheses, right? Or this in the square brackets up here. It's just a constant that I could just put that into my calculator. When I put that thing in square brackets into my calculator, I get 38.75, um, 3.33552. Now notice I'm carrying out a lot of decimal places, but um, I, would, I would say you should get in the habit of carrying out a lot of decimal places um, for these intermediate calculations because um, your online homework is going to want answers down to the penny. If you start rounding off too soon, you're going to get round off error and it's going to tell you that your answer is wrong, even though it's not technically wrong, it's just not precise enough. 
All right, so now I want to solve for r. All I really need to do is divide both sides by this 38.75333552, right? And if I do that, if I take the this 12,000 and divide it by, here, I'll just write it down, 12,000 divided by um, 38.75333552, what I get is $309.65, okay? So if John wants his car in three years, and he wants to be able to save up the money and save up the $12,000 over three years, he needs to deposit $309.65 every month to get the, to achieve his goal, to achieve, achieve this, this future value of $12,000. All right, which this actually brings us up uh, to the topic of sinking funds, because essentially this is a sinking fund. A sinking fund is just an annuity um, that you set it, set aside um, for some future date and, and it often in involves a target um, future value. So this is an example of a sinking fund. A sinking fund is a type of annuity. So I'll meet you in the next video to talk more about annuities or I said I mean sinking funds. <laughs> okay all right.